This one's hot off the press from Airfix. Uh, it's the 172nd Messerschmitt ME262A1A. Uh, it's a Series 3 kit and um, a 2017 tooling. Uh, I've just received this, it's been released uh, this week, so um, quite excited to get into this one and show you what it's all about. So that's the box art, again, very iconic um, aeroplane. It uh, doesn't need much introduction. It's probably one of the most um, important aircraft to come out of the Second World War and led to the jet, air, jet era of aircraft and um, was used in the later stages of the war by the German Luftwaffe Air Force. Uh, so through 1944 and 1945. This being a Series 3 model from Airfix, uh, you get two options. So starting with the instructions as usual, um, we've got the modern version of instructions now from Airfix. <coughs> so these do have colour coding to show you where the previous part was placed. So uh, going through here we start with the tub style cockpit found on the ME262 and we put the instrument panels which are along the side and also the traditional instrument panel at the end. And this does actually make up a complete tub, pilot is included as well, and uh, that then fits into the lower part of the wing. The, the wing section is in two pieces, so you've got the lower part and the upper part, and you can see this through the undercarriage, so this bottom area of the tub here is visible on the underneath, so that's the reason for the construction being the way it is. And then quite quickly, this should be quite a short build, we're straight into the two fuselage sections coming together with a spacer in between to uh, create the forward wall. And then the parts of the wings discussed in the previous section then come on to the fuselage to create the underwing and bring the fuselage together. This is also part of the underside of the fuselage. And then we've got sections there going on completing the forward part of the underside of the fuselage. This has a nose wheel. It's part of the undercarriage and it mentions here to put five grams of weight on in the front. Uh, it is usually best to go over on the weight than under and uh, make sure it doesn't sit on its tail. And then the upper side of the wing is attached to the lower part of the wing in this stage. Then we move on to the rear section of the aircraft and the two horizontal stabilizers and the fin go on to the tail here and it's got uh, shows you about alignment here, so it's very important, it's very straight. Then we start making up the engines, which are jet engines in this uh, instance, so obviously there's no propeller, so there's quite good uh, detail on the un inside with the fan blades, and that creates uh, an internal detail as part of the, I suppose that's uh, engine nacelle still. Um, and then you've got the rear part as well, and this is new in Airfix, I haven't seen this before, they're mentioning exterior colours here, so uh, that means whatever the colour is on the plane on that part, that's what you paint here. You've also got that on the previous step. It also says paint option 32, 56 and 240. So that's uh, referencing internal colours. Move on to the undercarriage. So we place the two engines underneath and then you've got the option for in-flight, which would look pretty good, especially with this aircraft. Uh, or we've got the option for the undercarriage and the wheels down, so that's quite complex with a lot of detail here. So that's the nose wheel going on there, and then we go on to the main undercarriage here, with the wheels being built up here with an insert, and they're weighted wheels, so uh, showing you the correct positioning there. It has a strange shape, the ME262, with the uh, main wheels here, they sort of it go invert slightly so you want to check that and it can look a bit odd but it, it's how the aircraft was done and there's uh, examples here telling you how to line everything up and then onto the canopy and the windscreen and front part of the canopy is uh, helpfully produced with parts of the fuselage so if there's any seam filling around here you're not doing it around the clear parts and then you've got the other sections going on with the option for closed or open and that then completes the build. And then on the rear of the instruction sheet, there is the markings for the stencil data. So it's a nice sheet here showing you where those are placed. So it's a placement sheet. So that's very useful. And um, from the looks of it, it's full stencil data for this one. So that's useful. 
Then we move on to the painting instructions, which are quite nice here. Full glossy sheet with uh, full colour range all across. Humbrol colours here, so uh, make a note of that if you're not using Humbrol colours. It's quite easy to convert in this case because they're the German RLM colours, so they tend to be made by lots of different paint manufacturers, so it's very easy to convert that across. And you've got the standard uh, underside is the ROM76, which is the late war scheme for the underside, and then on the top in this one is the late war ROM83, which is a sort of dark green, and then we've got silver on the fronts of the engines here. So that's quite straightforward with a nice bit of mottling. Uh, interesting decals here with the checkered pattern, and this is from an aircraft uh, late again, which is March to April 1945, based in Bavaria, Germany. And then marking option B is a bit more um, of the iconic ME262 marking with the splinter scheme across the top, which is again late war ROM colours of 81 and 82, which is you've got the light green and the dark green, and then the underside is ROM76, and um, you've got the fuselage banding there, which is uh, quite nice, and a few other decals which do make this stand out with the shield insignia there and a few other bits. It is worth noting on all of these, as with all Airfix kits, there are no swastikas included and uh, pretty much all of the Luftwaffe aircraft did have a swastika, so obviously if you want to add that then you'd have to find that from other sources. So very clear marking options there. This uh, B version is again another late war one, January 1945, based in Germany. Then on to the decals. So these are really nice, printed by Cartograph. Some of the best I've seen from Airfix, actually. This is the most modern kit I've had so far, and um, they seem to improve every time. And here, the improvements I can see to note are the instrument panels are now, they are coloured as a decal, but the only the dials are coloured, so you have a clear decal in between the dials, which is very good. So you can paint the plastic part, the base colour, and then put this on top, and that should go for quite a more a detailed looking instrument panel. All of the common markings here are absolutely perfect. You can read the stenciling data, which is great in this scale, and then again, very good markings all the way through for the two options. So, I mean, it's hard to fault that at all. So, then on to the plastic parts. So, still, we get uh, everything in one bag, and the clear parts are separately bagged in the same bag. So, we'll start with the clear parts. <coughs> Very simple, it's just three parts to this canopy. Uh, everything here is quite clear. There is a bit of crazing and um, a few marks on the main section here, but I would think a dip and clear should clean that up. Uh, the rest of it is no problem. The windshield there in front area of the canopy is extremely nice, and here you can see it's got a part of the fuselage attached to it, so if you need to seam fill around there, it makes that very easy. So not a problem there. Then moving on to the biggest uh, sprue, and here you can see quite a lot of detail here with parts for the engines, so you've got the two sides of the nacelles coming together and then you've got the ends of these with the fan detail on the with the fan blades for the internals on both sides, so that should make for a very detailed engine from looking at it from the outside, and then we've got again an extremely well detailed uh, nose wheel bay the pilot who is actually not very good, it's uh, very similar to um, the old style of FX pilots, very blurry, not very crisply moulded and not a lot of detail there. The rest of this is all very nice, uh, there's quite a lot of detail here for the landing gear and the seat is a very nice one piece and there's parts here for the instrument side panels. So very nice detail here on the inside of the fuselage and uh, you'll see that through the open undercarriage from the underneath of the aircraft. So that's very nice and uh, parts from the cockpit tub here. There are a few ejector pin marks but I expect they'll be covered by certain things like the seat and a few other bits. So that's no problem. Then on to the last sprue. So it's quite a, it should be quite an easy kit. There shouldn't be much... Um, the build should come together quite quickly and here's the tops of the wings which obviously get attached to the one piece under wing, the one piece wing for the underside. And we've got some details here of drop tanks and a few uh, 
with a few fittings and the horizontal the rear horizontal stabilizers very nice probably the most refined panel lines I've seen on an FX kit so far very nice detail there's no riveting detail on any of these panels but I believe on the 262 all of that was puttied in anyway so that shouldn't be a problem um, so all in all that's really quite nice on all of those sprues so that is the ME262 from uh, Airfit in 172nd scale this is uh, kit number A03088 so this is a new tool there has been an older tool of the 262 but obviously that's quite easy to um, see up against this one this is brand new and uh, the previous one hasn't been released for some time and that's a really nice kit highly recommended and is available as of the second week of September 2017